Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video. And today I'm going to be talking about what I've been reading for the Walter Scott Prize for Historical Fiction. So one of my favourite literary prizes to follow is the Walter Scott Prize for Historical Fiction, which is a prize based all around historical fiction, which obviously I love a lot. I have been reading along with the Walter Scott Prize for many years, um, and this year is no exception. Um, so when the long list was announced uh, a few months ago, the long list of 12 books, um, I made a video talking about the books that are on the long list and what I thought of the long list so far. Um, and since then, I have read three books from the long list, which is not that many, um, but I did enjoy them. So I'm going to talk about them today and give kind of little reviews for those three books and also the shortlist has been announced as well so I'm going to talk through the shortlist and kind of my thoughts on that and my reading plans um, for the next kind of two months between when I'm filming this and when the winner is going to be announced. So um, I have read three books from the long list and um, one is I Am Not Your Eve by Devika Ponambalam which I've already spoke about in a wrap up at a reading vlog and then the other two which I've only recently read are um, The Secret Diaries of Charles Ignatius Santro by Passion Joseph um, and also The Chosen by Elizabeth Lowry. I enjoy all three of these books and um, two of them have made it onto the shortlist one of them hasn't but before I get on to the shortlist let me talk a bit about the three books that I have read so that, as I said the first book I read was I Am Not Your Eve by Devika Ponambalam which I read um back in March, I guess. So this book is the story of a real historical figure, Teha Amana, who was the muse and sort of the child bride of a famous French impressionist painter, Paul Gogar. And this book kind of interweaves her narrative um, with the perspective of um, his daughter back in France and also with various kind of myths and legends about Tahiti. There was a lot in this book that I really loved. It's a really powerful, hard-hitting read and there were some like really memorable scenes and I feel like the characterization and the sort of very complex, messy, dangerous relationships going on in this book were really interestingly done. I will say that this book is very hard-hitting. There are lots of scenes of kind of like sexual assault and coercion um, and obviously it is dealing with a sort of older man having a relationship with a teenager girl and so like I didn't enjoy reading this. Um, I do think it is a good book but I found it a very difficult hard read I suppose. I would also say that it is a bit more literary than my usual taste and um, like we move around in perspective quite a lot and occasionally I did struggle to know whose perspective we were in. But overall, yeah, it was a really powerful read and kind of definitely one that was worth your time. Um, it's very intense as well. I read it in one sitting which I think was probably good like I feel like that added to the power of it but probably also added to like the trauma of it if that makes sense but anyway there we go this was the first book I read from the Walter Scott Prize long list and then the next book I read was The Secret Diaries of Charles Ignatius Santro by Patterson Joseph which I really really loved this was a book I was really looking forward to and I really did love it a lot and um, it's about another real historical figure as indeed um all three of the books I'm talking about today are um I don't think everything on the long list is um but all the things I've read so far on the long list have been about real historical figures so this book is a fictionalised account of the life of Charles Ignatius Sancho, who was a black British man in the 18th century, um, a historical figure who I find quite interesting and who I've sort of read a little bit about before. And this book is a fictionalised account of his life, um, of his kind of growing up, um, his struggles to access education, um, his meeting his wife, um, and him kind of going on to become a figure within British society and the first black man to vote in Britain. There was a lot about this that I really loved. Um, I love the way it's written and the characterization is just great. Um, Sancho just emerges as such a fully fledged character um, and I just really, really loved him. Um, and I also really liked the kind of Buildings Roman Dickensian equality of this book. So interestingly, actually, in the introduction, in the author's note to um, this novel, um, this is what Patterson Joseph writes. I did not write this book to stir debate on the historical accuracy surrounding the presence of black people in the United Kingdom in ages past. The numbers are disputed naturally, the presence is not. This only is my goal, to depict that presence in the form in which I met Oliver Twist, David Copperfield and Jane Eyre, very personally and movingly. And I found it really interesting that he mentioned Oliver Twist, David Copperfield and Jane Eyre in the introduction because this book has a real like Victorian buildings roman feel to it. Um, obviously it's set in the 18th century, not the 19th century, but it has for me a real Dickensian buildings roman quality to it. Like it has a very David Copperfield quality to it, um, which I just really, really enjoy. I feel like the only thing I will say is that maybe I wanted it to be a bit longer. Or maybe, did I want it to be longer or did I just want the waiting to be slightly different? I don't know. Basically the narrative structure of it is very like a Victorian buildings roman in that it is very much weighted towards the first half of 
Charles Ignatius Sancho's life um, and kind of his upbringing. And then the kind of latter stages of his life are sort of moved through much faster. And I kind of wanted as much in the second half of his life as in the first. However, I do kind of take that like, this book is in the form of a building's romance. So that kind of wouldn't have made sense with the book that it is, but also I kind of just wanted like even more of Charles Ignatius Sancho's fictional life because I just really loved him as a character. Um, and yeah, I thought this was great. So I'd highly recommend The Secret Diaries of Charles Ignatius Sancho. Um, it was a really fantastic read. And then finally, the last book from the Walter Scott Prize long list that I've read so far is The Chosen by Elizabeth Lowry, which I really, really absolutely loved. I feel like this book was kind of built to appeal to me. So The Chosen by Elizabeth Lowry, again, focuses on real historical figures. Um, and this time it focuses on Thomas Hardy and his wife, Emma. And we are following Thomas Hardy in 19, at 12 um kind of in the weeks following his wife's death as he begins to reevaluate their marriage. He discovers her diaries um, and a bit of a memoir that she had written about their lives together and kind of is aware of her unhappiness and her individuality in a way that he has just never been before. And The Chosen basically looks at their marriage using Emma's diaries um, and Thomas Hardy's memories to kind of like give you a full sense of their marriage um, as well as Thomas Hardy's life in the weeks after her death. I really love Thomas Hardy as a writer. I've read all his novels, a lot of his short stories. I think he's fantastic and he is one of my favourite writers. Um, but I love him not only as a novelist, but also as a poet. He's probably my favourite poet. And my favourite poems ever, like my favourite collection of poetry ever, um, is Thomas Hardy's Poems of 1912 to 1913 series, which are the poems that he wrote after his wife's Emma's death when he was re-evaluating their relationship. Um, and my favourite poem, like, probably of all time, is at like Castle Botterell, which is one of those poems. And basically, The Chosen by Elizabeth Lowry is like the novelisation of how those poems came to be. So obviously it was going to appeal to me. Like, um, it was very, very much going to appeal to me. And I was really excited going into The Chosen because I had read another book by Elizabeth Lowry before, Dark Water, which was on the Walter Scott Prize long list a few years ago, and I really, really enjoyed. Um, and I was just really, really excited for The Chosen, and it did not disappoint. It was fantastic. I just, I just loved it. Do I think you would love The Chosen as much if you weren't a Thomas Hardy fan? Maybe not. Um, but even leaving aside the top Thomas Hardy connection and the way I thought it engaged with his work in such a fantastic way. I also just thought it was a wonderful novel, a really, really powerful look at grief and marriage and complicated historical circumstances. It looked at the 19th century and the early 20th century in such an interesting way. It looked at grief so powerfully. It looked at like writing so interestingly. Um, there was a fantastic moment where Emma sort of writes something out of her diaries about how Thomas Hardy doesn't understand any people except for the people that he has created. Which I just thought was so telling because, like, if you read Thomas Hardy's books, he, he feels like someone who understands humanity entirely. Um, but he, it does seem that he had a very sort of difficult personal life in some ways, which obviously, like, you could very easily understand people very well and still have a tough time in lots of ways. Um, but it was just really interesting to kind of read that observation and that take on it. And I just thought it was fantastic. I'm really, like, I don't know, I feel like it looked at a complicated historical situation with a lot of sympathy for everyone and a lot of like compassion and understanding of people and it was just a fantastic book and I just loved it very very much. I feel like every time I read along with the Walter Scott Prize for historical fiction I find a surprise favourite that I didn't know about before um, and I feel like this year's is The Chosen. I will probably end up loving something else equally from the rest of the uh, long list and short list as I keep reading but yeah The Chosen so far is my favourite and yeah I want it to win. I thought it was so good. And I just, I just loved it very, very much. Very, very much indeed. Anyway, I feel like that's been enough, like, happy rambling about The Chosen and just how much I adored it. So let me move on to talking about the shortlist. So the shortlist has now been announced for the Walter Scott Prize for historical fiction. And of the three books that I've read so far, two of them made it onto the shortlist. And um, so I'm Not Your Eve and The Chosen have both made it onto the shortlist. I am very sad not to see The Secret Diaries of Charles Ignatius Sancho on the shortlist because I did really, really love it. But I'm pleased to see the other two on there. Um, especially The Chosen because, like I said, I just adored it and I kind of want The Chosen to win. Though there are um, five more books on the shortlist that I am excited to read. So the shortlist consists of I Am Not Your Eve by Devika Ponambalam, as I've already mentioned, and The Chosen by Elizabeth Lowry. And then the other five books on the shortlist are These Days by Lucy Caldwell, um, which is a book I'm really excited to read. This is set in World War II Belfast during the Blitz and looks at the lives of two very different sisters. Um, this is one I've been meaning to read for a while, so I'm really excited to get to 
to this. I'm very pleased to see it on the shortlist. The next book on the shortlist is The Geometer Lobachevsky by Adrian Duncan. Um, and this is a book about a Russian mathematician hired by an Irish company to um, measure land set for drainage in the 1950s, um, which sounds slightly rogue, but I also am kind of excited for. I feel like um, the Walter Scott Prize is very good for like having a slightly random pick that I've never heard of from an independent publisher that goes on to be really fantastic. Um, and I'm kind of hoping that um, the Geometer Lobachevsky might be one of those books. The next book on the shortlist is Act of Oblivion by Robert Harris. This is the story of two men who have been soldiers of Oliver Cromwell who flee England after the English Civil Wars and, and go to the US and kind of what happens to them there. I really like Robert Harris. I've read some stuff by him before um, and I'm excited to read this so hopefully one I will get to. The next book on the shortlist is The Sun Walks Down by Fiona McFarlane. This is the story of a farming community's search for a missing child in Australia in the 1880s set over just a few days. And the final book on the shortlist is is um, Ancestry by Simon Mayer, which is a fictionalised account of the author's own family history, which takes us um, to, I think, 19th century London and also the Crimean War, um, which sounds really, really good too. I feel like this is a really good shortlist um, and I'm pretty excited for it. In fact, I feel like the books that I was least excited to get to of the long list haven't made it onto the shortlist. The books that I am sad not to see on the shortlist, though, are um, The Secret Dies of Charles Ignatius Sancho, as, as I have already mentioned, I really liked that one and then I am also quite sad not to see um the second sight of Zachary Cloudersley by Sean Lusk on the shortlist and um, because that's another one from the long list that I was really excited to get to so I might just read that anyway I mean whether I read it imminently or whether I read it like later on in the year I will read it at some point because it's one I'm really excited for it sounds very up my street but yeah I am a little sad not to see that on the shortlist however I do think this sounds like a really good shortlist and I'm quite keen to read all of the books on the list I feel like all of them really interest me um and I feel like they they all could be really good. I was trying to pick the ones I was most excited for and I feel like these days is probably the one that is like highest on my priority but actually I feel like they all sound really good and I'm quite interested and excited um, to sink my teeth into these. So I've read two books out of the seven book shortlist which means there are five more for me to try and read before the winner of the Walter Scott Prize 2023 is announced on the 15th of June. I will do my best to read all of these five. I don't know whether I'll manage it because five is quite a few um, but I will do my best and I'm fairly hopeful. I feel like I'm excited for all of them um, and none of them are part of a series or like except long so I'm relatively hopeful that I might be able to get to them but we will see. So far the chosen is you know my chosen to win and um, that we will see whether my opinion changes as I read more of the shortlist. I feel like this is an exciting shortlist this year so I'm excited to carry on reading along with the Walter Scott Prize for Historical Fiction. Do let me know if you've read any of the other books on the shortlist what you thought of them I'd love to know. That's all for now thanks very much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.